Okay, my friends, hang on. Let me get everybody started. Anchor, Ustream TV, Spreaker.com, and who else we got? We've got everybody. I think that's uh, almost everybody. Amen. And uh, getting our, who else? We got to get our, oh, we got to get our uh, Anchor dot com going is it live friends there we go we are live on all channels friends anchor in the house you stream tv spreaker of course and our cast box dot com friends good to be here well we're live and i'm chasing mosquitoes friends amen we're live on our uh stream tv right now uh, hopefully it's going all right. Amen. And, uh, well, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, we've been having some technical issues over at Ustream. It's not been working lately for us. So, uh, all I got is like a big hum. So hopefully it's, uh, should be all right. Well, we're praying on it. Amen. And, uh, Hopefully, like I said, friends, we've been having lots of technical issues over there and uh, still trying to kind of fix this thing here. So hopefully it'll be OK because uh, it's like I said, we've been having some major technical issues with our Ustream channel, friends. Hey, it's Friday, Saturday morning. Glad to be here. Uh, Pastor Raquel here live, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast in the house. Got the cameras queued up. The uh, mix is all set to go. We're going to get into our message here, friends. I am uh, still working, uh, going through part six, God's grace for you, a new creation in Christ, friends. And man, am I excited about bringing that message to you. It is good, friends. Lots of eye-opening and awakening uh, scriptures and uh, messages in that book or in that uh, in that lesson. So we got the coffee, we got the big book of love, pens, papers, notebook, tablets, uh, notes, all that stuff, friends. We're ready to go. It's Friday, Saturday morning now, friends. It's a little after twelve. Had uh, a couple little technical hiccups that I had to deal with to try to get that. You know, how to get that stuff going in there? I don't know what it is, but. And, of course, I'm still getting a red light at our at our Ustream channel. But, uh, you know, we're going to pray on it. Just let that go. God's got this. We're ready to go. Amen. Hey, I want to do a quick shout-out list, friends. Uh, you know how we always start? I always do that shout-out list. You made the list, my friends. And, friends, if you'd like to be on the list, I'd be more than happy to put you on it. Hey, man, just email me, private message me. Let me know that you want to be on the list, friends. We can do that. I can I can set that up and get that going, friends. Hey, man. All right. So what is going on? Like I said, we have some major, major problems. I am not sure what, but we're going to just keep moving forward, friends. That's what we got to do. When the devil comes to calling... We got to move forward and just boot him out of the way. He's got no authority over us, friends. Tell him, hey, wait a minute. I got some coffee to make. You ain't even on my mind, right? Well, there you go, friends. You have to do that every single day. I'm going to armor you up with the armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10, and 20, friends, and then uh, throw some scriptures at you uh, with the uh, sinner's prayer of salvation. I finally got a chance to really sit through my notes and kind of go through them and, and change them around a little bit. So that is cool. Uh, finally, uh, as I was sitting in, uh, you know, kind of ran around today and took care of some business. Sitting in 90 plus degree weather and it started raining, friends. Now that is that is God's awesomeness. Uh, he can do that at the same time. And uh <laughs> That was cool. So, well, it's Friday, Saturday morning. It is Saturday morning. 
I guess it is. All, all day. So, friends, I'm going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Glad you guys could be here. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Pastor Rick Rowley here live. Having some coffee. Going over some notes. Going over some scriptures. And uh, sharing the good news gospel with my friends. Amen. Hey, we got a live chat going on right now. Uh, I believe Spreaker is on the line. And, of course, over at Ustream TV. Uh, right now, friends, live on the air. Amen. Man, let's get into it. Time to rock the devil and get him moving on because we've got no time for him. Friends, uh, we have no time. He is just uh, in the way. And uh, we got to keep moving past him and uh, just keep uh, trusting God with all our hearts, souls, and minds. And don't even worry about that pesky dude. He's got no authority, friends. Well, I'm going to arm you up. I'm going to get you into the message, friends. And we might visit, uh, as we did our, or did our Bible study, continuing uh, our Bible study in the book of Luke. And that would be uh, chapter 16, friends. We're moving right along. And don't forget, tomorrow I'll be on live Block Talk Radio at 3 o'clock, friends. And... Uh, I'm praying on the Spirit to give me a new scripture to share with you. I don't know what I'm going to do, friends, but I'm going to leave it to God because I know He is the <laughs> He is everything, friends. He is our uh, He's our antidote, uh, our healer, our provider. Amen. And we just got to keep trusting in Him no matter what, friends. So I'm trusting Him. I'm giving it to Him. I said, "Hey, God, I'm going to leave it to you to pick." the scriptures you want me to share with the good friends. So, friends, let's get into it. Let's open up with prayer. Amen. And I'm going to get the uh, armor of God. Amen. Get some coffee here, friends. Amen. All right. Well, we're ready. We are ready to go, friends. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just open up with a prayer for you. I just give this to you as I continue your message and as I continue delivering your words, God. I know this is all of you and none of me, and uh, I'm just uh, humbled and and, uh, grateful that you have provided so much. I know you are our healer, provider, everything, our antidote. And as I just lay this at your feet, God, I just move forward with your message. And I'm just so grateful uh, that you have called me into this. As I share the message tonight with my friends, families, viewers, everybody that can hear and view these podcasts, God, I, I want to lift them up, build them up with encouragement. I, and hope and strength, uh, God, because I know you didn't, you, you don't want us to be like this, God. You didn't want us to be oppressed and depressed, uh, God. I know that you wanted to, uh, you wanted us to rejoice in your name. So as I lift up my friends, everybody listening and everybody can hear, I lift them up, give them hope, courage, strength, power. And, uh, you know, as we just rejoice in your name. I just lift them up right now, God. Whatever situation they have to be going through, I lift it up and I give this to you, God, because I know you are our light in this dark world. So we've got to stand by, stand fast, and hold on and keep the faith and trust and believe it, believe in you and trust in you at all times, no matter what. So I lift this up to you right now and you're, presence as the Holy Spirit is welcome here. Uh, Let it permeate the air in the studio and let it just uh, let it just fill the room with your Holy Spirit God. As I do this podcast I I just am so thankful and grateful and humble that you've called me to this that I deliver this message in your words God. 
I give it to you right now in your son's precious name and the blood that he spilled for us and the stripes that he took for us. God, I give this to you right now in your son's holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the church says hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, what is going on a little after 12 o'clock here, friends? God's radio. I'm just the DJ on God's radio, God's time, all the time, every day, uh, spinning that record that keeps, uh, hey, the, the hits keep on coming, friends. I got a lot of messages. I don't even know what that even had to do with anything, but hey, I feel like I'm on the DJ time or radio or something. I'm on God's radio <laughs> all the time, 24-7. You guys can check it out. Uh, I'm just grateful to get this message out, but uh, yeah, my uh, studio is set up like a real kind of a radio station here, friends. God's radio. Uh, just keep getting this message out no matter what. It ain't about, uh, it's not about us, friends. It's uh, about what can we do for God, friends? Because he's done so much for us. You know, you hear me talking about that grace uh, as I got into that message yesterday and I've uh, been doing this series of messages. But uh, it, it, it's so, friends, it's so amazing. You know, uh, the transformation. See, he said, be renewed or be transferred by the renewal of our minds. We got to put God first at all times, no matter what. I got friends up here that are falling apart, uh, having a struggle because they're not putting God first. You got to stay in God, no matter what, friends. I know I'm probably rambling. That's what I like to do, friends. I like to rabble about God. Somebody said you talk too much. I said, yeah, you're right. I talk way too much about God. I fill it with my heart, my mind, and my soul. And I live for him. I'm just grateful, friends. And uh, But yeah, so when we struggle, when we get into the flesh, friends, that's when we get into trouble. Because we're just pushing God right out of the picture. We can't do that, friends. we got to rely on God. The more the temptations, the more the problems, the more the issues, and the more the situations really get our goat, and really push us, that's when we got to rely on God even more and just dig in uh, and hold on. Trust God, my friends. Uh, I know sometimes I don't make sense. Sometimes I do. I just do what God told me to do, friends. Amen. Hey, what's going on? Uh, we're going to get into tonight's message. But first, no commercials. I'm not running commercials, but I got this message. Well, the shout outs, friends. You made the list. I'm happy to announce you're on the list, friends. Amen. Hey, Brother Mark down at uh, the Facebook page, Christian Watchers of the 2017. Good grief. I need some more coffee. 2017 and 2024. Solar Eclipse Group. Well, that's not and, but it's 2017, 2024. Solar Eclipse Group. Great group. Behave yourself. Mind your manners. Mind your P's and Q's. Brother Mark, get on you and say, hey, would you mind the rules, friends? That is a, a great page. Glad to give it a shout out here. Amen. And uh, glad to share the info. So be nice, friends. Amen. Well, Miss Christina, my friend at uh, Facebook, always been a great uh, help, a great support since the beginning, since day one or so. Been on there quite a while, so I appreciate that. My friend Sophie in Switzerland, appreciate all the support, all the help. Uh, I've been kind of talking to her and ministering a little bit. Uh, my CBN channel, friends, go check it out. I got a Christian, it's on my Christian Broadcasting Network, friends. Really cool. Glad to do it. Hey, my friend Laura, locally, a longtime friend and supporter of the ministry. I appreciate that, Darren. That's awesome. Amen. And of course, Miss Tiffany Walkwell Ministries at uh, Facebook.com. Go check her out, friends. Very prophetic message. Uh, very on point 
message his friends. You got to check it out. It's pretty amazing. Uh, go, go in there and support her and uh, tell her you heard her. Amen. All right, and Miss Susan, you made the list. I appreciate you so much for all the support and everything. This is so cool. Uh, who else? Well, anybody, if you want to make the list, friends, if you if you feel uh, like you you know you want your shout outs, let me know. Private message me, send me a message, and I'll put you on the list, friends. Amen. Oh my gosh, friends! Uh, it is late. Uh, going on the air tomorrow. Block Talk Radio, three o'clock, friends. I've got the new schedule uh, almost done. I had to redo it a couple of times, but uh, it's just got to make sure I don't overdo it, friends. I don't want to get burned out, you know. But with God, and see now, my flesh would get burned out and tired, but supernaturally, my Spirit man would be is full on ready to go because we can't let the pressure on uh, when the devil puts pressure on us. So he tries to overpower our fear or our faith, not our fear, but he over tries to overpower um, our faith with his fear. So we have to put the word of God on him and overpower our fears with faith, right? Or overpower the overpower the devil's fear with faith in God, right? I know that makes sense somewhere. I hope somebody got that. Anyway, I had that revelation a long time ago. It's pretty cool. All right, take a deep breath, pull in your sliding chairs, stretch out, grab your coffee, get your your uh, checklist together here, friends. Bible, our big book of love, coffee, drinks, whatever you happen to have around, and pens, papers, notebooks, because I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures, friends. If I got homework from the Holy Spirit, you know, he lays it on me pretty thick, friends. I'm not kidding. Uh, he lay, gives me a lot. Uh, it really never stops. Uh, even when I'm sleeping, I still get revelation. And, uh, man, I'm grateful. Hey, I asked for it. I prayed for more insight, revelation, knowledge. I prayed for uh, uh, more discernment and more understanding of, uh, you know. So that's what I'm doing, friends. And I do truly appreciate you. Big hugs and high fives all the way around. You guys are awesome. I appreciate your support so much. Pastor Rick Rell here, live, worldwide, live ministry podcast. We're getting into the night's nice message, friends. Armor up time. Grab your Bibles, friends, and let's take a look at Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 out of the NIV. Oh, my gosh. Let me get on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing, friends. Amen. Well, armor up time, friends. Can we do this? We can do this right now. Finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power and put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle, now watch this, friends. This is really cool. Uh, It's uh, like advice here and uh, wisdom all rolled into one, friends. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place uh, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Uh, In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows or the darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is, friends, we know this, is the Word of God, the Bible. Amen. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. 
And with this in mind, be alert. And always keep on praying for all the saints or the Lord's people. Now, pray for me also, or pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, so or to me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. Friends, you are armored up. Uh, now, I broke this down. I did a whole podcast just on the armor of God, and I'll, I might revisit that, friends, because you never know what the Spirit's going to give me. So, as I broke this down into 1, 2, and 3, or A, B, and C, I uh, it gives the verses, and as we are in a spiritual warfare, uh, the first one is spiritual warfare, verses 10 through 12. Spiritual weaponry is verse 13, and readiness is verses 14 through 20. And uh, we will do that. So, but again, as I get reminded, friends, when we, we, we know this one, John 14, 6, a little sidestep here for a second. And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And that's it, friends. There you go. You have been armored up, my friends. Amen. Have I got so much to give you? I do. I have a lot to give you tonight, friends. Uh, So I'll give the armor, I'll give the uh, call to repentance, uh, sinner's prayer of salvation. Just a little bit, friends. But uh, I want to give you this because the Spirit reminded me, tell them to wake up, rise, and not be asleep. I had a dream about that one. I had a vision. I was in the Garden of Gethsemane. I was watching Christ go back and forth. His disciples had fallen asleep. And I could see that going on in the vision. It was really clear. I could hear the sounds. I could hear what was going on. Uh, And uh, as I'm watching, he's telling the disciples, could you not stay awake for me one more hour? Man, that was a wake-up call, friends. As I woke up the next day, or that morning, I came out of it, I was like, wow, some of us have been spiritually and emotionally uh, sleeping or asleep in the Word. We have to wake up, friends. As I was reminded, like I said, I've been reading this for a few days now. As I was reminded in 2 Corinthians 3.31, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. You should, or you show, that you are a letter from Christ uh, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. That verse did it. That woke me right up. It was like, oh, yeah. Uh, man, oh, man. Uh, so that's how I was relating that, uh, that story. That uh, pretty amazing. Uh, so, all right, friends, so there you go, a little story, a little antidote, and, uh, right into it, friends. Amen. All right, so I'll save that for a minute here, because I don't want to give away, I don't want to do the sinner's prayer yet, just yet. Uh, how are you guys doing? Are you still there? Amen. Hey, I appreciate uh, you guys uh, that are sharing and, and doing all this uh, liking and stuff. Man. That's, that's really cool. We've jumped and made it to iHeartRadio now, so you guys can tune in to that live every night. Uh, every time I go on Spreaker Live, it is actually simulcasted uh, several different channels. You can catch it 
uh, SoundCloud, Tumblr, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Twitter, and Facebook live, uh, friends. So I appreciate that. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. But not surprising. You know. All right. So, I know. I'm still going. We're just getting warmed up, friends. i got about an hour on our Anchor channel. Uh, so I want to get as much of the messages uh, here uh, as I can, if possible. And uh, so I'm going to go into the NLT, Living Water for Those Who Thirst. Uh, amen. So as I was looking through this, friends, if you don't have one of these, by the way, let me know. Email me, private message me. Uh, on my Facebook page and the ministry Facebook page, and I will be sure to get one to you. Amen. So I got shifted again. Jeez, that's cool. I, you know, I love the Holy Spirit, and I'm glad that He, uh, you know, He answers my my call here, my prayers here. Uh, that I can be able to get this message out to you. So give me a quick second here, friends. Hey, we're going to look at the Beatitudes again, friends. Just real quick. Uh, at the, uh, see, Matthew 5. Uh, the Beatitudes. Now, God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for Him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. And God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And God blesses those who hearts, whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, or the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is there. One of my favorite scriptures, uh, well, I have a ton of them, but anyway, uh, I love the Beatitudes. So, Hang on here, friends. I'm doing my notes things. All right, so let's look at this one, friends. Uh, off and running. NLT, living water for those who thirst. Friends, is there any blood-washed believers in the house tonight, friends, this morning? Uh, as we have a little Bible study, have a little church tonight. I think you guys can do it. I do. I have faith. And I can see your shiny, happy faces here, friends. Hey, Amen. We're reading the Bible, friends. Uh, we need to recognize our true condition as we look at Matthew 5, 3, and 5. There's three parts to this, so take notes. You know, I always like to uh, have a little Bible school here. Amen. Lots to give you, friends. Lots to give before we get into the main message here. Uh, Jesus shows us the way to true happiness in this text. And believe it or not, it has nothing to do with personal fulfillment. Now here, Jesus gives us a three-step what a three-step prescription. Holy cow! To spiritual health and happiness. Well, he's given us some information, friends. We need this. All right. So let me fix that. I know I was getting, I was getting there. So. Number one, friends, taking notes. I hope so. Uh, see yourself as you really are. When you realize your need for God, in verse 3, you see yourself as you really are. Now, this is some harsh stuff, but it's the truth, friends. As um, this book explains it in Matthew, uh, you see yourself as you really are, a sinner in desperate need of God's forgiveness. This is the first step, the faith or the phrase need for God in this verse comes from a verb meaning to shrink, cower, or cringe. It speaks of someone who is destitute and completely dependent on others. 
Therefore, to realize your need for God is to admit that you are a spiritually destitute apart from God. Number two, I'm not done yet. I'm just scratching the surface here. Take action. Another way to translate verse four is happy are the unhappy because we see ourselves as we really are. We mourn over our condition. Uh, This leads us to begin uh, making changes in our lives. Now, Scripture tells us, for the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. There's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in spiritual death. In 2 Corinthians 7.10, you can read that for yourself, friends. Check it out. Uh, Our true sorrow will lead to joy, salvation in Jesus Christ. Number three, pursue meekness. Seeing ourselves as we really are produces two vital spiritual qualities. Gentleness and lowliness. Not loneliness, lowliness. In verse 5, we have an accurate and honest assessment of ourselves that in turn affects how we approach others. This contradicts the world's way of thinking which advocates or advocates uh, standing up for your rights and asserting yourself in order to get what you deserve. The meekness Jesus describes here is not weakness or cowardice, but rather power under constraint, much like a powerful stallion submitting to the control of the bit the more we humble ourselves and admit our weaknesses, the more uh, we will rely on God's grace and the happier we will be with ourselves and others. Friends, did you catch that? Did you see that, friends? The more we humble ourselves and admit our weaknesses, the more we will rely on God's grace and the happier we will be with ourselves and others. Well, there you go, friends. I'm telling you, it's deep here, friends. Got a lot to share, a lot to give you. All right, so let me let me go through here because you know I I got a lot to share as uh, the spirit is just laying it on me. Hey. Have we talked about perseverance lately? Well, let us jump over here since we're kind of in the book of Luke. Luke 8, 15, friends. Amen. In Luke 8, 4, and 8. uh, Let's look at this real quick here, friends. Now, Jesus tells a large crowd the well-known parable of the sower to illustrate four different reactions to his message. The seed that falls on the footpath represent those who hear the gospel, but uh, who do not allow it to penetrate their hearts and minds. I'm going somewhere with this, friends. Hold on. You'll see it, friends. You'll catch it. All right. So you hear the gospel, but uh, who do not allow it to penetrate their hearts and minds in verse 12. The seed that lands on the rocky soil represents those who hear God's word. And, friends, here's the catch, and receive it with joy. But uh, over time, their commitment uh, is shown to be shallow and superficial in verse 13. The seed that lands among the thorns represents those who appear to believe but who let the cares of this life slowly choke out any growth. In verse 14, the seed that falls on the fertile soil is the seed that actually takes root to produce 
spiritual fruit. Uh, what is the difference between this group of individuals and the rest, you ask? The key to their success can be broken down into three steps. One, they listen to God's word. They're hearers of the word. Number two is they obey God's word. And three, they persevere to produce a huge harvest. Now, describing their perseverance in the faith, Jesus uses the Greek word, uh, hupamon, which means a patient enduring. It is this perseverance that produces spiritual fruit. New believers, amen. By letting God's word take root in your heart and life, you will not only grow stronger and be able to withstand the storms of life, but your life will grow or help to draw many others to the Lord. Amen. And amen. I told you, friends, I got a lot to cover. Um, Before we get into the main part of the message again, Uh, I'm going to just give you a couple here. Well, a few. Now, I gave this out to you before. It's on the other podcast. Friends, you can check this out. We are in the book of Luke because I'm still doing a study here. But these little side notes, these cornerstones or first steps uh, are amazing, friends. So let's look at this one again. I did this uh, a couple of weeks ago here. Amen. A disciple takes up his or her cross and follows Christ. Amen. Now, choosing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ takes more than just verbal affirmation. It takes... Friends, now watch this. This is this was is what got me. This whole study on this. This is where I was like, just oh my gosh, I am not doing enough in the kingdom of God. I am not doing enough. I got to step it up here, turn it up a notch, because like I said, friends, the devil keeps turning up uh, a notch and higher every single day. He knows how to push your buttons. He knows how to get us. But we got the antidote, friends. We got the heavy artillery, if you will. Amen. And I'm telling you, friends, listen to this. This is really cool. I had to load up on some coffee because the devil thinks he's going to sneak in the one on me and really just really get out. He's, he's been attacking, friends. It's amazing. Uh... Amen. But uh, watch this, friends. This is pretty cool. As I'm just, uh, I just got to write this page down here. And uh, so give me another quick second. Here we go, friends. Check this out. Now watch this. If you're taking side notes, (laughs) I'm telling you, I'm going to load you up on some scripture tonight, friends. Well, early in the morning. I guess we're Saturday, right? It is Saturday. But I'm going to load you up on some stuff here, friends. Some armor. Uh, A disciple takes up his or her cross that follows Christ. Now watch this, friends. Check this out. Choosing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ takes more than just verbal affirmation. Uh, Amen. It takes daily sacrifice and commitment. When you follow Christ's guidelines for discipleship, you will find that the end result is a far better is far better than you could ever have imagined. Now here are three things a true disciple of Christ should do. Friends, are you ready? I'm loading you up. Number one, if you're taking side notes here, friends, I appreciate that. Uh, Your desires must take a back seat to his desires for your life. Huh. 
Being a disciple means recognizing that God's plans for your life are ultimately better than your own. That may mean making some sacrifices in your life, uh, such as spending more of your time in God's Word, volunteering to teach children Sunday school, or uh, putting off that vacation to work on a ministry project. Yet, in relinquishing your own plans, friends, getting out of ourselves and getting into the Spirit, uh, you will find yourself drawn closer to the Lord. And that's what we need, friends. Uh, Just when you think you can't take it anymore, you're back into a corner, you've had enough, you're pulling out your hair, you're screaming your head off, Take a deep breath, friends. Slow down. Breathe. Close your eyes and pray if you have to. I do it all the time. Hey, I pray uh, to stay focused on God, friends. That's what we got to do. We can't let the enemy uh, wedge in there because, you know, that's what he does. He knows every trick. He tries to attack us no matter what we try to do. He sneaks in there and he, he knows how to push our buttons, friends. It's like the big elevator with all them buttons on there. He knows how to push every single one of them and get us. Well, come on, friends. I don't know about you. I've had enough of that dude getting in my grill. It's time we got back up in his grill with the word of God, right? I know. Come on now, friends. You can do it. So, (laughs) number two, what? Pastor, are you going to tell us? What are you going to tell us now? Number two. What is number two? You must take up your cross daily, friends. Uh, Jesus is not simply referring to a religious symbol at this time in history. Anyone seen carrying a cross, this is horrible, friends. Anyone seen carrying a cross was headed for a horrible death. By far the cruelest of all deaths. Some have misunderstood the statement by Jesus to mean that your cross is your personal inconvenience or problem. And in this passage, however, Jesus is talking about the act of dying to yourself in essence. He wants you to lay yourself at his feet and say, I want your will more than my own. And once you have taken up that cross, you will experience the abundant life that Jesus promises to those who follows him. Friends, that is just too cool. God is the coolest of the cool, friends, I'm telling you. Right off the bat. There we go. All right. Are you ready? Friends, this is gripping here. Are you ready for number three? I know you can handle it. I'm giving you some some messages here, friends. I'm, I'm trying to fuel you up a little bit here and, and feed your soul. Amen. Ah, uh, you must lose yourself to save yourself. Wait a minute. Pastor, what did you just say? I'll tell you again, friends. I'll share this with you again, my beloved. You must lose yourself to save yourself. I'll I'll show you here, friends. In verse 24, it may sound like a contradiction when you first read it. Yet, if you truly want to find happiness and fulfillment... You must relinquish full control of your life to Jesus Christ. Now, I know that's not easy. Uh, That is not an easy thing to do, friends. But it is a rewarding thing uh, to do. And it is, um, remember, we have eternal life, friends, through Christ Jesus. Uh, amen. So that's why this this part's really, really important, friends. You've got to lose yourself to save yourself. 
It is no longer... Now, remember here, friends, uh, you must relinquish full control of your life to Jesus Christ. Seek Him diligently. In John 10.10, 10, the... Uh, what was it? Uh, go look... That's your homework, by the way. John 10.10, 10, The Good Life. Amen. I know, it's there. Amen. Go look it up. It's your homework, friends. Uh, it is, okay, so let's get back to this. I know I'll get distracted here. Uh, so, you must relinquish full control of your life to Jesus Christ. Now, Paul wrote, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Uh, that's in Galatians 2.20, friends. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In Galatians 2.20. Taking up the cross is no more a burden to the disciple than wings are to a bird. A surrendered life holds the key to a fulfilling walk. It is true that it does cost to be a disciple. But it is also true, friends, that it costs a lot more not to be. Wow, that is, that's some powerful stuff there, friends. All right, let's see what the good book has to say. Oh, my gosh, friends. Hold on, my friends. It's time to hold on. Amen. Because I got more for you. I know I got something. Hey, let's continue this one. Let's look at this one real quick. We've got a few more minutes on our anchor channel. I'll phase that out and then we'll jump right into the main message. We may as well start it right after this one. Uh, continuing in the first steps, friends, a disciple counts the cost. Now, this is a repeater. I call it one of my repeater verses uh, because it is so cool and so deep, friends. Uh, it's in Luke, or covers Luke 14, 25, 33. We're just moving right along here, friends. Amen. Glad to, glad to be here on the radio. Now, see, I got into the flesh. I wasn't going to do this. I was up, like I said, at the top of the hour. I podcast till about 4 o'clock in the morning. Got done a little after 4.40. And uh, by the time I shut everything down and uh, kind of, you know, closed the studio up a little bit, it was almost 5 o'clock in the morning. I didn't get to bed till 6.30 this morning. And then I turned around and got right back up at 9 o'clock, friends. And uh, so that devil was talking in my ear, whispering, hey, you're too tired. You don't need to podcast. You don't need to get this message out. Nobody's going to care anyway. Nobody's even going to listen to you. Well, for about a half a second, not even that, I almost bought it and slept in. And no, I got my coffee. I got ready to go. I got ready to blast the devil right back to hell where he came from, friends. And and see, we have to do that, friends. Like I said, the enemy is a liar. He's a uh, a, a deception. Uh, He comes in to kill steal, and destroy our dreams. And uh, he, he attacks, friends. we got to armor up. Stay in the Word of God. Push forward. Push, move, move forward. Don't even think about it. You know, w- when that thought process comes in, eliminate it by putting God's Word on it, friends. And so, I did. I, I put God's Word straight on it, friends. And uh, I'm glad I, I I don't listen to that duty no more. It's just not worth it. All right, hang on, friends. I just had a thought process. Well, I, God, Spirit just gave me this. I better read the Sinner's Prayer of Salvation for our friends, the listeners, and uh, the followers over at our anchor.com, friends. Now, I believe that is the Apple channel, friends, iTunes.com has added the podcast onto their channel. So, same as uh, Spotify and same as uh, Google Podcasts, you can find me over there too. 
But Spirit just shifted me back over to the Sinner's Prayer of Salvation. Let's say that prayer, friends. If you, uh, if you uh, just hey, if you want to say this prayer, repent and receive Jesus into your heart. Pray this prayer with me, friends. Uh, bow your heads, close your eyes, take a deep breath. You can do it. Uh, as I read these words, friends, let this meditate in your heart. Let it, let it sit in your heart and, and marinate on this for a little bit, friends. Uh, dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner, and I thank you for dying on the cross for me, and I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart, that you are the Son of God, and I believe you are the Lord, and that God raised you from the dead. Now, please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart clean. Come and live in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Teach me to walk with you and live for you the rest of my life. Now, thank you for saving me and for giving me the gift of eternal life in heaven with you. Friends, there you go. So, if you have said this prayer, friends, and if you have accepted Christ into your hearts, would you get a hold of us here, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast, Pastor Crowley here live. Uh, hit us up at uh, lifegraceministry60 at gmail.com. Let us pray for you, friends. Let us, uh, we'll get you a Bible. We'll, we'll sit down. We'll have some coffee. We'll share testimonies. And, uh, We'll pray for you, friends. That's what we do here. 24 hours, we've got a live prayer line at our Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast at Facebook.com, friends. So, we would be more than happy to pray for you. Uh, no worries at all. Uh, please do that. Please feel free, friends. You know, you can't do this on your own. We can't do this on our own. Uh, as we, we reach out to our family, our friends, uh, you can reach me here anytime. Uh, I don't mind. It's not an inconvenience to me. This is my calling. And I, I appreciate you guys. I really do. Uh, so feel free to contact us. Don't worry about it, friends. That's what we're here for. We are in God's service, friends. Amen. So, Welcome to God's family. I'm glad you guys said that. Good for you. High five and big hugs all the way around. Amen. Good good for you, friends. You have made a bold stand in the kingdom of God, friends. That is so cool. Amen. We better grab some coffee. We're about, uh, well, we got a few more minutes. I'm going to read this one. A disciple counts the cost. And then uh, we'll uh, jump into our main message, friends, for our Friday slash Saturday morning live podcast. Man, old man, friends, appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, sharing some Bible scriptures with you here, friends. Now, as we continue in Luke, a disciple counts the cost, Luke 14, 25, 33, uh, at the time, Jesus said these words. He really did. He had become quite a popular figure. Crowds flocked around him wherever he went. But not always for the right reasons. Consequently, Jesus directed his solemn and searching words to those people who followed him for selfish purposes or because it was the thing to do. Now hang on, I'm going somewhere with this, friends. I know you're intrigued. What is he talking about? I'm telling you, friends, watch this. Uh, likewise, Jesus doesn't want you to follow him only. Here it is, friends. Are you holding your breath? Okay, likewise, Jesus doesn't want you to follow him only when it is convenient or socially acceptable. He wants you to be his disciple for the long haul. And there's 
There it is, friends. He wants you to be his disciple for the long haul. Regardless of how easy or difficult it might be, that is why you must count the cost of being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to count the cost, you ask? Well, the following four questions will give you a concrete idea. Are you ready, friends? One through four, can you do it? I know you can. I know you're hungry and thirsty for the Word of God. Friends like me, I am hungry and diligently seeking the Lord at all times. Friends, I have to. Uh, it's, uh, it's my life. This is what I do. And this is what I've been called to do. So I'm glad and grateful to do it. Uh, okay, number one. Do you love Jesus more than anyone or anything else in your life? Tough question, but you can do it. Uh, number two, do you love Jesus and desire his will for your life over your own? And I'll recap this here in a minute. Are you willing to accept ridicule and sacrifice for the cause of Christ? Number four, will you commit to following Jesus even if it isn't popular or expedient? Wow. Amen. If you have carefully examined your heart, friends, counted the cost, and can truthfully answer yes to these questions, then you are on the road to a lifelong discipleship and friendship with Christ. It's a personal relationship, friends. It is not a religion. There's a difference. Uh, Now, Jesus is not looking for half-hearted followers. He wants wholehearted commitments. Amen, friends. That's deep. I told you, we don't shallow surf preaching here. This is deep root. All right. Uh, Anchor.com. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you being here. We are closing that channel out, friends. It is almost over. And uh, we're going to shut that one down and just let it set up and do its thing. But we're going to continue this message here. We're at Ustream TV, Spreaker.com, and CastBox.com, friends, live. Covering all the bases, going into the message, friends. Uh, I'm going to jump into that in just a second here. Uh, amen. All right, Anchor, that is really cool. Appreciate your time, and uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, the other channel, we're going to continue this message. Uh, it's really good. So if you guys want to catch the first hour of tonight's podcast, you can go on over to Anchor.com, friends. Check it out, Pastor Rick Riley Live. World Wildlife Ministry Podcast. Close it out at anchor.com, friends. Thank you so much there. Amen. All right. Well, that's it. Anchor, uh, get some sleep, get some rest. Got a busy day tomorrow. A lot of podcasts going on. Amen. All right. That's it. I'm closing them out. See you later, friends. Amen. All right, well, let's continue the message, my family. Let's do it. Let's keep going here. Amen. So let me drag this over here. Amen. Let me get this loaded up. All right. So it's going, friends. Let's continue our Bible study. I know we got to do that. Hey, let's look at our Bible lesson, friends, as I continue. Now, again, I might jump real quick to chapter 16 in the book of Luke before I get into this message. I want to keep everything focused and going, moving, steady. So let's, for the benefit of those uh, following the Bible study uh, at uh, our YouTube channel, uh, I'm going to jump into Luke Friends, we're going to take a little bit of a break between this podcast here, uh, between the the message that I'm going to give you. But let's look at uh, Luke chapter 16, and I'm going to go into the King James Version, the parable of the dishonest steward as we do our Bible study, friends. I just didn't want to get away from it because we've been doing that before, and I kind of jumped around a little bit. But I want to focus on this tonight, friends, on the lesson that I'm going to do. But let's look at Luke chapter 16, friends. 
a parable of the dishonest steward uh, for the benefits of our Bible study, friends, as we continue this message. And he said also unto his disciples that there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. Uh, And uh, let's see what word goes over here. I am resolved what to do, that which I am put out of the stewardship, that they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his uh, Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the, unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take the bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Uh, then said to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto them, take the bill and write four score. And the Lord commanded, or commanded the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is at least is faithful also in much. Amen. So, friends, did you catch that? See, there's a point where I'm going into this message. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful to the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the truest riches? And if ye have uh, have not been faithful in that which is another man's, uh, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they, or ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but uh, God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is a as an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man present itself, or pre- pre- Precept it unto it. I'm telling you, friends, King James is not an easy read, friends. I I want you to go in there and look and and check it out. Uh, Amen. So let's go forward here in 17. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass that one title of the law to fail. Whosoever putteth away his wife and married another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. Now the rich man and Lazarus, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the 
crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried to the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip, uh, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which uh, would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. They would come from hence. Then he said, I pray these therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Uh, for I have five uh, brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Amen. Uh, where are we at here? Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. Uh, amen. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And said unto him, if, we, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Well, there you go, friends. That's our Bible study for tonight. I had to jump in there and finish at least one of them. And we're going to go to chapter 17 next, friends. Tomorrow we'll be jumping into that and doing that one. Uh, continuing the Bible study, friends, that is so important to hear the Word of God. All right, now let's jump into our Bible lesson here, friends. Amen. All right, friends, let's get into it. Uh, this is really good here. So, continuing part six of the series, God's Grace for You, uh, a new creation in Christ. All right, friends. So, set back. We're going to go into part our, our six here. Uh, continuing our live message, friends. Glad you guys are here. We're hanging out, reading the Bible, friends. Sharing uh, God's good message, friends. And I sort of said, I, I may sound a little tired, friends. Like I said, I told you the story earlier. This is what's like, hey, this is it, friends. So, bear with me, friends. I'm trying not to lose my voice here, but I, I'm just trying to get this message out to you because it is important, friends. we got to do this. John 10, 28, 29, friends, in our Bible study here. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one can snatch them out of my Father's hands. Amen. Now, Romans 8, 15, 17, friends. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful, sla or fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children, now we call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Yet, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Uh, for all creation is waiting eagerly 
for that future day when God will reveal or reveal who his children really are. So 1 John 5, 12, 13, friends, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. I have written this to you who believe in... Uh, where did I go here? I make sure I don't... Uh, okay, hang on here, friends. I got my messages all kind of doubled up here. Uh, in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. And we are confident that he hears us. Whenever we ask for anything that pleases him, and since we know that he hears us, friends, when we make our requests known to God, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Amen. All right, question to the church. Amen. All right, let me take my You know, I, I always got to do notes here. Amen. So, question for the church. How can I be forgiven if I sin? Well, I'm going to tell you, friends. I got the answer right here. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Now, Psalms 32, 5, moving a lot of right along here. I'm getting tired, friends. But that's my flesh getting tired. It ain't going to stop me. I'm still going. I got coffee. I'm excited about this word, friends. And I'm excited to bring it to you. I'm glad that I can do it. So, Psalms 32, 5, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Uh, Romans 3.22 and 24. The righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. See, he was uh, the sacrifice. Uh, amen. And thank God that he was, that he, he took all that for us, friends. He wiped our sins out, past, present, future. Amen. Uh, Psalms 51, 1 and 2, and also verse 3 and 9. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sins. Man, oh man, friends. All right, hang on. I got another question that I didn't write down. Uh, so I continue in this. All right, question for the church. Hey, man, anybody wake it up here? Any blood-washed believers in the house this morning? What changes should I make in my life? All right. Re uh, let's see, repeat this one. Uh, it's one of my side notes here. Ephesians 4, 22 and 26. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body and your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Now, Ephesians 4.27, friends. And do not give the devil a foothold, nor give place to the devil. 
Ephesians 4, 28, 37. He who has been stealing, but steal no longer, but must work doing something to share with those in need. Do not let uh, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind, compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you, friends. Amen. Uh, Galatians 5.24. Oh, wait. I got to backtrack. I forgot this one. John 3.30. We must become greater. I must become less. We must increase, but I must decrease. Now we get to Galatians 5.24. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. All right, Romans 12, 17 and 19. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, uh, live at peace. With everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine uh, to avenge. Now, Romans 12, uh, yeah, continue. Romans 12, 17, 19. Amen. I will repay it, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. Now, Romans 6, 1 and 2 here. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? In 1 John 3.16, this is how we know that love is Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Amen. Just some scriptures here in this message here, friends. So hang on. So 1 Peter 2.1.3, Therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. Of every kind, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. In 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12, abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that thou, uh, thou, they accuse you of doing wrong, they must see your good deeds and glorify God. Uh, all right, friends, I'm going to stop right there. I don't want to oversaturate you here. I, the, I know I always give a, a lot out uh, just because uh, the Spirit shows me that. Uh, but uh, I'll finish. I'll I'll finish out this. I think we're just barely. We're almost at the end here, friends. We just got a few more pages, but there's no reason to to rush this message and to really hurry it up too much. Word fourteen. How does God speak to me? And we're going to be looking at Isaiah thirty twenty one. Uh, whether you turn the right or to the left. Your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So, we're going to lead off right there, friends. That's going to be our next podcast message. Amen. And, uh, man, so glad to be here. So glad to, to get this message out. 
friends. Uh, I really am. I'm glad you guys are here. And uh, so check it out tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock, Blog Talk Radio. Later today, actually, uh, Blog Talk Radio. I'm going to get all these messages out tonight. I'm going to get these podcasts going and uh, get them out on the Internet and uh, share them with the good people. So as I work on our Anchor podcast, friends, tonight, we're at episode 18. That's pretty cool. All right. So I'm going to work on this, my friends. And, uh, man, I appreciate you guys so much. Amen. That is so cool. All right. I'm going to close out Spreaker, Ustream Broadcaster, and, uh, of course, our CastBox.com, friends. Check it out. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Pastor Rick Rell here live, preaching late night this morning again. Man, I got so much to share and so much to give you. I uh, appreciate your time, and I uh, appreciate uh, you hanging in there with me, friends. Amen. Get some rest. Go to bed, my friends. Get some sleep here. I'll see you tomorrow. Same, uh, same setup channels. Uh, I'm working on the uh, podcast schedule, so... It'll probably be posted here in the next few days. Be patient. Yeah, I'm working on it. Amen, friends. That's it. We're out of here. Uh, you stream TV. I appreciate you working for me. Uh, that's pretty cool. I didn't have any major hiccups tonight. Uh, amen. All right. Let's uh, close out here. And. All right. All right, you guys, I appreciate that. You stream, we're out of here. I'll talk to you soon. Amen. All right, that's it. We're out of here. You stream TV is off the air, friends. I got to work on these other channels. I'll see you later, friends. Amen. All right. Lots of editing, friends. All right, that's it. Cast box. I'll see you later. And closing out with Spreaker.com. I'll see you guys later. Amen. Pastor Rick Rell here live, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Coming back, 3 o'clock tomorrow, Blog Talk Radio, friends. Or later today, actually. I'll see you later. Amen.